Drama as Labour Party's Abure Apapa led factions clash at presidential tribunal. President elect Tinubu opposes live broadcast of presidential election petition tribunal, says it is an abuse of court process. Senator elect Dave Umahi suggests three tenure, three tenures, 70 year age limit for legislators in Nigeria. And outside of Nigeria, Kenya's Odinga denies handshake with President Ruto's government. And Oromo rebels accuse Ethiopian forces of attacks following peace talks. On Politics HQ tonight, we look at the People's Democratic Party's chances at the tribunal and attempts to reconcile the president-elect and one of Nigeria's leading political figures. We'll also look at the race for the 10th National Assembly leadership positions. APC has not only zoned the positions, but nominated specific individuals for the post. Welcome to the show. I'm Tolulokwe Adeleru Balogun. The People's Democratic Party is one of the main parties challenging the victory of the All Progressives Congress's presidential candidates, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, at Nigeria's presidential election petition tribunal. While the tribunal has started its work and the party says it is sure of victory, other issues pertaining to the party have been making the headlines. Some of the headlines have to do with my guest, a PDP stalwart. News recently broke out that there have been attempts to reconcile the relationship between my guest and President-elect Tinubu. Mr. Bode George, a former deputy national chairman and party chieftain of the PDP, joins me now. Mr. George, welcome again to Politics HQ. Thank you so much for joining me. It's always my pleasure. Yeah. I'll have to start with this question because you've been very vocal in your claims that you would go on a self-imposed exile if Bola Ahmed Tinubu emerged as president of Nigeria. In fact, this was also a statement you made to me on Politics HQ. So starting from there, Mr. George, are you speaking to me from exile or are you still in Nigeria? <laughs> well, he hasn't actually won the election yet. So I, what is the need for me to say I am not here? I am a bona fide Nigerian and uh, I am speaking to you from the heart of this country. Uh, from Abuja. So I'm very much around. Uh, we will wait the outcome of the courts uh, because the process cannot be over until the decisions of the court are, are made. And let, let's respect the laws. It's, it's the, the, the laws of the land, the electoral laws are so clear. Once you find disagreements throughout the process, you go for adjudication with the judiciary. And until the judiciary finishes his work, you cannot impose anybody and hoodwink Nigerians into accepting that this is the man who has won. The pronouncement by, uh, by INEC does not define the end of the process, no. Which you what I don't know what the hurry is for. This is a, 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 a presidential candidate who is going to run for another uh, four years. So what is the hurry? A couple of days for them to adjudicate, decide all the arguments for and against must be looked at, and thereafter you declare whoever wins. So you what know, I'm getting from that, you that is rush. I, I I don't I don't understand it. What so, the rush is for. So what I'm getting from you, sir, is that the victory of whoever will emerge, in your opinion, as Nigeria's president, will come by the pronouncement of the court and not necessarily Absolutely. by the winner declared by INEC. Absolutely. That, that, that is the most rational thing to do. That's the most sensible, rational uh, 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 mind to take. If the laws did not ask us to go back to the court for adjudication, and that issue end by the pronouncement of the INEC, then we know it's over. But once everybody decided that, look, this thing is not over, there are uh, complaints here and there, there were irregularities, there were all kinds of things that were, you know, at play, let's go to the court. 
well, let's wait for the for the outcome of the judiciary before we now start jumping and junketing and talking and dancing. Right now, if you look at the whole of this country, from Sokoto to Calabar, from Boronu to Lagos, from 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 Jigawa to the uh, to Delta, where is the jubilation? Nigerians are waiting. They are waiting. Everybody wants Nigeria to progress. But please let us be just. Let us be fair. Let us be equitable. Don't don't start be a house built on a faulty foundation will collapse. I mean, it, it's simplicity. It, it's so simple and so clear. So please tell them. I'm, I'm also appealing to them. What is the hurry? We must inaugurate. We must do this. We must do that. You know, all kinds of play out and do, lies, tons of uh, discordant voices. Because we want to the, the will of the people to prevail. We want the will of the people to decide who will manage the resources of this nation for their own benefit. So Mr. That's all George, about politics. Don't hmm. make it a mobocracy because that is the rule of the mob. We'll come to more issues around the inauguration, but let's come to what has been recent news, and that is, of course, uh, on ongoing attempts to reconcile you with President-elect Tinubu. Uh, and this rift is said to be a decade old. For the benefit of many who may not understand the source of your disagreements with Mr. P uh, Tinubu, the President-elect of Nigeria as it stands, take us through that. Where does your disagreements with the former governor of Lagos State, now President-elect of, uh, President of Nigeria, come from? Please, you know... To, I have absolutely nothing personal. Absolutely nothing personal. As a human being, I went through the Christian ethics. I went to a very good grammar school, the first grammar school in Ijebulan. My great grandfather was a reverend gentleman. My grandfather was, a, uh, was an organist. I was a chorister. I went through the rigors of a proper moral upbringing. For me, I have concluded, based on the, 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 the tenets as stated in the Holy Book, love your neighbor as yourself. What you will not accept, don't do it to your neighbor. I've not deviated from that. I have absolutely no qualms about Bola Tinumbu. The only disagreement we have are his methodologies in managing the resources of the land for the benefit of the people. That's all. And in politics, you can have disagreements, but we must not be disagreeable. I have nothing against it. The things that they had done in the past have come and gone, and no qualms. I'm still, you know, full-blooded uh, Lagosian. You can still go. He has not uh, taken my wife or abducted my children. I've not taken his wife. I've not abducted his children. But we have this discussion, uh, 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 disagreement on the methods of managing the resources of the land. Because what do you call public office? Is public trust. And what is public trust? You are telling the people, please elect me so that I go there to manage the resources of your land for your benefit. And I'm saying, and I've been crying about this, that that is not his own methodology. This is where we disagree. That but means if he does that mm -hmm. and brings smiles to the face of the, look, look, you live in Lagos. You live in Lagos go into any of the local governments. Where is the future for these young people? Is a state of helplessness, a state of hopelessness. Although he has promised that if he gets there as the president, I will do A, B, C, D, and I will do that. You need a robust opposition to keep him in line. And being a robust opposition in Lagos, People are now looking at it as if, oh, it is his enemy. Enemy from what? Mr. George. I'm almost 80 years old. What else am I looking for? So, Mr. George, does that mean, 
Does that mean that these attempts at reconciling yourself and the president-elect are not absolutely necessary? You've said you don't have a personal grounds. It's more about a uh, disagreement on method. So should there even be attempts to reconcile the two of you? No. Look, when the old man, the, the old man came to me, you know, in, in our, in our uh, uh, Yoruba tradition, when an older person tells you, I want to see you for something, you don't tell him, please, I don't want to see you. That's rude. That's not our culture. Papa called and said he wanted to pay me a cut. I was, I said, shouldn't I come? He said, no, it's me. I want, I want to meet you in your office. Would I tell him no? You know, Papa Lucy came. And uh, even before then, my junior brother, the family buddy, big buddy, also came talking about the same thing. And I told them, I have nothing against this man. The papa said he came for three issues. The first one is that he had come to apologize that I know I have been offended by Bola Tinumbu and all those stories and all that. And I said, I am a Christian, sir. I have, vengeance is God's, not mine. And this mentality of retaliation in any setting is completely, it destroys the, 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 the nation. But the mentality of tolerance builds up the nation. It is a, a weak mind that will never forgive. But forgiveness is a measure of your strength. So I said, I've forgotten that. So the next question, they said, okay, buddy, look, we want all minds, irrespective of political affiliation, to come together as Lagosians. Let's look at these problems together. Let's try, because two heads are better than one. We are in one party, we are in another party. There are others who are not even uh, card carrying members any of any political uh, party. Why not we form a forum where we can discuss the issues of our state? Any rational mind will say, yes, sir. So the first one say yes, sir. The second one, I said, yes, sir. The third one was, look, why don't you behave like the other colleagues of yours who are in G5 and the uh, uh, whatever they call that, that I should also come to Abuja to congratulate him whether the cuts are over or, or not. I said, ah, Papa, that will be difficult. I belong to a political party. We did not agree with the result of the election. We are in court. And if, as long as we remain in court, it will be uh, uh, inadequate, it will be uh, uh, unjust for my person, for my party, to say I have jumped ship to go across, that will be traced and, 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 and be called a traitor. And you know, the, the, the major issue is this. We are there for adjudication. Mm -hmm. All the, the, the fallout, all the, 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 uh, the crises and then the manipulations and things that went on, we said we didn't agree. We have our own results. We have our own issues to discuss before the justice. So let's wait. Otherwise, Look, I am a life member of the board of trustee of my party. I am the only one representing the southwest of our of the country eh, in the national caucus of our party. How would they, how would I, in whatever imagination, before the end of the process, to jump ship and carry my agbara and say, look, I'm going to say, sir. My children will even disown me. My family will, 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 I'm the head of the joint family now. They will disown me. In fact, you know what my wife told me? If she, he says, if, you, if I hear that you have gone there before, before you come back to this house, I would have packed my load and be gone. And I don't want that. So I explained to them that Sir, this is not acceptable. I can't do that. They wanted me to be like Shima I said, ah. Sir, so, I've told you, the two positions that I've held in the party 
will not make me to work against my party. Let the final decisions be made in the court, and our party will decide which way we are going. So let's but talk about the courts the now. Issues, huh? Let's talk about the tribunal, Mr. George, uh, because right. you, as you've explained here, you will only congratulate President elect Inubu if he has judicial victory. And in terms of all of that, we have to ask about the strength of the PDP's case and also whether or not you think that the party will get fair hearing at the tribunal. So what do you think the PDP's chances are at the presidential uh, election petition tribunal, sir? Now, I have not read the detailed documents, right? But I know that the, the PDP in mind is that they did well and they won. Bola Tinumbu himself is claiming he won. OB is also saying he won. Let them present their cases before the justices. As for me, I believe that any right judge who took, who took an oath to defend justice and fairness will always remember that lady of justice, blindfolded. You know, if you go to any law court in this country, a statue outside, you will find a lady blindfolded with a sword and a scale. That is the oath of office, which they took. And that no matter who appears before you, whether it's your son, your enemy, your white man, your black man, your, you look at the presentation, the laws of the land. And the whole world is watching us. We don't want to make a mistake because the ship of state is drifting so badly. We need competent leader, a leader that will now respond to the, to the desires, to the needs of the people of this country. Go everywhere. I told you, from Sokoto to Calabar, from Brunu to Lagos, from Jigawa to Delta, the younger generation are angry because they are hungry. They are now educated. Where is the future for them? No job, no life, no guaranteed security for their lives and properties. So what, what, what we need are people with track record of commitment to serve the people. That's all. And, and utilize our resources. Because God gave this nation so much. I have traversed the length and breadth of this country. There is hardly any part of Nigeria that God has not blessed with one resource or the other. But they are so badly managed, badly mismanaged. And, 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 and what you have for it, uh, we, education, education, education. Education makes people easy to govern, but impossible to deceive. Once they are there, they will challenge. They will ask questions. That is why you are there. As okay. a public officer, you, you have the public trust. That trust is the power which you are exhibiting as the leader comes from the people. All right, they Mr. are George. expecting you to make life more meaningful to them, okay. well, more I desirable to them. And if you don't do that, that that's why when Ogapata Pata made his broadcast, that I am going to leave one positive legacy in this country that generations and generations to come will forever remember me and that his name will remain in the golden pages of our history and that the electoral process that we've been running was absolutely shambolic, useless, and thoughtless. And he said, look, I will do it. They went, 300 and something billion was spent to buy modern technology, to manage the electoral process so that the interlopers, the, 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 the manipulators of figures and all that will never be part of it. What is we find? You, you bring up something they that I, running, I was going to ask you about. the election with the system in, in, in Anambra. They did the same thing in uh, Ekiti. They did the same thing in uh, Oshun. And one other state. So, Mr. And on George, that day, 
Yes. I, please, this I want to use this opportunity. I, I apologize for interrupting you. Uh, because you bring yes. up an interesting aspect when you mention President uh, Mohamedou Buhari's position on the Electoral Act. So let me put this right. to you then. We're in the final days of the Buhari administration. What do you think the president's legacy will be? As a Nigerian, ask me. He promised that he was going to leave that positive legacy, especially on this electoral process. We budgeted 300 and something billion. You mean this process was legitimate? This process has any, 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 any thoughtfulness? What, what would it be? We went straight back. This man, Professor Yakubu, told us that there was a glitch on the result, on the, on the election of the president. And so they reverted back to the only the, the unreliable, undependable process. That was a complete failure. What do you call that? Look, my position as a, as a retired naval officer, I'm a weapon systems engineer officer. On board the ship, let me take you through the small analogy. On board every warship now, you have the radar that will pick an oncoming missile coming to blow up your ship. Then the radar will collect as much information and send it to the computer within the uh, operations room. Do all the computation because, you know, of, of modern technology. They will compute the speed of the uh, uh, incoming uh, missile, how long would it take to hit your ship, and what best equipment, gun, to, uh, to, to fire and blow it up. And then you are now telling me, at the D day, on the H hour, that incoming missile, there was a glitch in your computer, and your computer could not compete, compute and deliver results, you know, yeah, well, this is military. You will immediately be arrested and be tried for treason. What he said, I don't believe his story, that you will buy that much money spent to buy a robust computer, and on the D-Day and the eight hour, that computer had a glitch, and there is no alternative immediately to reroute the, 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 the calculation and deliver the results. You have to go back to those that old system, the system that had destroyed Nigeria completely. That is what you are now presenting to us and to accept it. And you are rushing everything. We must do inauguration. We must do this. Why was there a glitch? Why? Mr. On George. that eight, eight hour, I don't believe this story. That's why it's necessary to go to the court explain yourself and i pray that the almighty god that i serve will work on the minds of these justices and deliver and dispense justice to the nation All right. we are at a crossroad we are if mr we george behave and don't get it right it will be a shame so unfortunately i don't have enough time with you tonight but i must ask you this question because it's about yeah. how pdp has performed as an opposition party so the people's democratic party has been in opposition for eight years and it will now be an opposition political party for another four years but while it was in government and while now it's been opposition it has received criticisms uh, from nigerians what has the pdp learned in the past eight years and what does the pdp intend to do differently in the next four years that president-elect Tinubu is expected to be at the helm of affairs for Nigeria. Sir, very quickly. Tulu, let me thank you for that question. You know, in any organization, you are bound to have issues. You are bound to have disagreements. Yes, we the, the, the way the party was conceptualized, the way the, the founding fathers established our party, they developed a scenario, a system that could work for this country based on our experiences. We deviated from that concept and we found ourselves on the floor, beating and stupidly. By now, where is OB? Which party was he? And most of those other guys, 
Kwao which party was he? They disagreed on a principle, a major principle that established our party. But I hope after the judgment, we will all congregate, do a serious post mortem analysis, and come up with a, 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 the, the flaws, the failures, and redevelop, reassign, and reorganize, and rearrange, and re engineer the party. Because this is the first time in Nigeria a political party that has all the colors from the swampy forest to the savannah region in the north. We cannot continue to be as if this is a private enterprise. The founding fathers established if a, a system that encourages oneness, togetherness. And once you divide yourself based on principles, a divided house will be a defeated house. Right. For me, we will have a post term analysis. We will be serious and be honest with ourselves. That, and maybe we can still win in the court. I don't know. But okay. we have also a problem. Now, the problem we had Mr. George, Before unfortunately, the election, time the is not with people us. people are having the same problem now. Mm. So, uh, Tolu, I, I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity uh, to express myself. And I wish our, my, our country, I wish our country, it, it, it bothers me. This country trained me. This country gave me all the exposure of life. Okay. 25 years in the military, 25 years in politics. 50 years of my life in the service of Nigeria, we can do better than this. All right. We so can have to end the conversation And I there. pray that they will listen, they will reason, and we will deliver. Just, just right. for the younger generations come, and it shall be well with this country. I pray. All right. Bode George, former deputy, national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, one of those, and of course, a PDP chieftain. Thank you very much for joining me this evening. My pleasure. Okay.